Broadcasting from various countries around the world using voice over IP technology, this is VoIP Uncovered, a VoIP on Solutions UK podcast. I'm Kathleen Reed. This week, Howler Technologies officially announced its groundbreaking type of transcoder card, the Howler Screamer. The card works with your existing PBX software, such as Asterisk and FreeSwitch, and is designed to help business have a huge advantage in terms of cost and performance because of the cell technology it uses. Joining us today is Howler CTO, Jay Fenton. Thanks for joining us today, Jay. So you've told us that Howler Screamer can process up to 425 simultaneous G729 calls and is over three times faster than any solution currently on the market. Perhaps you can tell us what sort of technology you're using and give us an overview of how this works. Hi, Kathleen. Um, yeah, so the, uh, the Howler Screamer card um, is based around some technology that's been around for a couple of years, which um, is called the Cell Processor. Um, cell processor has been used in every PlayStation 3 that's out there, um, and more recently it's being used in a lot of the um, high-range uh, plasma TVs, high-definition TVs that people like Toshiba are producing. Um, we're actually the first company in the world to take that technology to the telecoms market, and um, what that allows us to do is to give just incredible levels of performance that just haven't been possible before in the areas of signal processing, in transcoding, and, and um, taking off some of the heavy lifting that's typically done uh, on your host CPU inside of Asterisk and free switch environments. So, Jay, what sort of businesses would benefit from using your Screamer cards? The, the, the Screamer board, as well as the, uh, the software-based version of our Howlets, which is the, the G729 codec that we've, we've um, developed, they're applicable to quite a range of uh, tele- telephony environments. The first being, um, for example, call centers who want to uh, save on bandwidth. Um, you know, typically call centers represent a, a very large concentration of users, and um, internet bandwidth is usually at a, a premium or a, you know bandwidth to their local provider. Um, so by using low bit rate codecs, they can actually drop that bandwidth down substantially. Um, G729 is literally an eighth of the bandwidth utilization of G711, which is um, the codec typically used. So our technology allows a call center to make uh, great cost savings uh, on that front. Um, on the, the other side of the, the industry, you can look at the, the VoIP operators themselves um, and companies who are, for example, routing calls over the public internet, um, who are routing them over lossy networks, um, where G729 really comes into its own because not only is it one eighth of the bandwidth and able to um, give you all those cost savings on the bandwidth side, but also it's much better at dealing with those lossy networks where packets typically can get dropped very easily. And with uh, the typical codecs like G711, um, it's able to recover much more gracefully from that. So the call quality is actually increased, even though the bandwidth um, is, is so much lower. Howler offers a similar product and software format only. What are the advantages and disadvantages of each? The software product that we sell um, at the moment is a G729 codec, and we'll have other codecs uh, in the future. Howler offers both a a G729 software and a a hardware um, product, which is able to offload the processing onto a PCIe board. Um, Now, the software is fantastic because it allows you to just come to our website, purchase exactly the number of channels that you need of G729, and then download the software and be up and running in a few minutes. Historically, people um, haven't been deploying things like G729 for two reasons. The first is there's been a barrier to entry on cost. So what we've worked, um, we've worked very closely with uh, people like Cipro, who are the patent holders around G729, to bring those costs down as much as possible. Um, and secondly, uh, G729 and other low bit rate codecs are very CPU intensive. And so as you start to increase the number of concurrent calls on your asterisk or pre-switch box, you'll find that you start hitting a, a bottleneck. Now, obviously, um, Howler's codecs are very, very optimized, and um, we've developed them to be able to get uh, as many calls as we can through a box. And typically on a, for example, a quad-core Intel box, um, you'll be looking at 400 to 500 concurrent calls. But if you want to um, be able to do other things uh, on that server, you might have complex IVRs or voice recognition or um, you know, uh, quite a few other things that also want or are vying for CPU attention, then you might want to move that transcoding and signal processing off onto a separate board. And that's what our Howler Screamer product does. Um, so it uses uh, the, the cell processor technology mounted on a PCI board and offloads all of that processing onto um, the cell processor itself. So your, your CPU is freed up um, to do other tasks. Um, and we brought that into the market at a very, very good price point. Um, the, the board itself is only a couple of hundred dollars. Um, and 
you can, uh, just as you can with our software package, you can actually buy just as many G729 licenses as you need and upgrade it over time. Um, key to the, uh, the success of our, our hardware offering is that we can actually give you additional uh, software modules for the board that uh, unlock additional functionality. So you can keep the same board uh, and literally just upgrade it as the months go by and how they release more and more products for you. Okay, great. So have you had any success stories in the field that you'd like to share? Well, we've kicked off 2010 with some fantastic sales, um, and we're looking to do some joint PR with those sales um, over the next few weeks. Our how the screamer board is being used in um, some quite large call centers as well as VoIP operators, um, and they're very happy with it because um, now they can actually deploy G729 um, to their users um, very cost-effectively and very, very scalably as well. What makes your product different from the competition? And why should people purchase a Howler Screamer card instead of, say, a Digium TC400B or the Sinway Transcoder cards? So Howler's products are based on um, quite different technology to uh, the cards you mentioned, um, which is one of the reasons we're able to achieve four times the performance of anyone else in the industry. The, the cell processor is an enormously powerful chip, um, and by mounting that on a PCIe board and using technology from Toshiba to do that, um, we have a very reliable product, but also a very scalable and, and very cost-effective products as well. Um, historically, all of the signal processing, the transcoding of low-bit low rate codecs has been done on DSPs, digital signal processors, um, and DSPs have been around for 20 plus years, um, and although the main state of the telecoms industry. The, the trouble with DSPs is that over time they've kind of stagnated in their technology, and they're nowhere near the performance of, for example, an Intel chip, an AMD chip, um, or a, you know, um, in particular the cell processor, which is even further ahead in terms of performance. So what Hell has done is harnessed that technology um, and brought it to the telecoms world where it can actually um, do the work of several year of um, a couple of dozen DSPs um, just on a single chip. And that gives you a lot of cost savings, a lot of um, performance increase, uh, as well as power savings as well. Excellent. So where do you see the market going, and what are the next steps for Howler? Um, well, the market is, uh, the telecoms industry in general, is obviously shifting towards a more IP and, and over time in all IP environments. Um, there's probably always going to be a need for transcoding. Uh, a lot of people are talking about wideband codecs now, which is uh, something that Howler is doing a lot of research on um, and you know, watch the space in terms of future products from Howler in that regard. Um, but even in the wideband world, um, once again, we're, we're not able to agree on, um, on, on one codec that fits everyone's needs. Um, for example, the mobile networks will all be using AMR wideband, whereas all of the um, the, the desk phones that are out there are now starting to support G722 and not AMR. Um, so in the, where you have two different networks who are using disparate technologies, there's going to be a need to do lots of heavy lifting, lots of number crunching to actually turn one codec into another and allow those two networks to communicate together. So how is really um, focusing on, on solving that problem and, and giving you the best platform that we can to not have to worry too much about um, you know, how you in integrate with all of these other networks, um, being able to do it cost effectively and being able to um, have great, great sounding, great quality audio, but still be able to keep that interoperability. Um, in terms of the next steps for Howler, um, as I mentioned, our Howler Screamer card is, is uh, in-field upgradable, so you can just add additional software modules which run on the card and will allow us to support new codecs, new signal processing technologies um, over the next few months. We've got um, quite a few modules that will be coming out. And um, feel free to have a look at our website, which is www.howlertech.com for more details. Thank you for your time, Jay. Jay Fenton is the CTO of Howler Technologies. This has been a VoIP on VoIP on Covered podcast brought to you by VoIP on Solutions. For more information, please visit www.voipon.co.uk.